welcome to on? Fix My List, our, your Thursday show where we fix your lists, or specifically, War Room Members lists from our Discord. Absolutely. So if you want to get in on the action, make sure you sign up to our War Room, which is either the warroom.vhx.tv, where there's a three-day free trial, or you can sign up on any of the subscription levels on YouTube here. Any of them are going to get you access to our uh, wonderful Worm community, and that is our Discord community. In there, once you have the Worm tag, you'll be able to uh, see the Fix My List submission channel. And every single week, whatever time you want, you can submit lists, and uh, we randomly choose three of them depending on which theme we're going for. That's right. Uh, it cycles. It goes from Xenos to Chaos to Imperium to Space Marines in some order. Uh, we did Chaos last week, so I believe Imperium is up next. Um, but if the worm.vhx.tv is a bit of a mouthful for you, and I get that, there's a link down in the description. Absolutely. You just go ahead and click that. Plus, you get access to all our awesome content that we put out week in, week out. And uh, that includes three stream games as well as various other theoretical content. Like today, I just released a Hypercrypt analysis video. Oh. And all the tricks and you know tips you need to know to beat uh, Hypercrypt Necrons. And then uh, we've got Jack releasing all sorts of tournament stuff related to his world eaters and his Lord of Skulls just running people <laughs> over. So if you want that type of action, definitely check it out. All right. Yeah. Gavin, you might hear yourself mentioned in that video. All right. If you like this type of content, please give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and tell your friends about us, as well as please leave a comment below letting us know what you think of the changes we make to these lists, and also which factions you're most looking forward to seeing Fix My List for. Absolutely. All right, well, let's dive right in with our first list. Let's do it. This is going to be Warhawks Drukhari Sky Splinter Assault. Ooh. So if you wouldn't mind reading what's in this list, I will look up and see if they have any now, comments. Now, Sky Splinter has basically become the de facto way to play Drukhari. It is so much better. It's a brand new detachment thanks to the January balance data slate. So if you're a new Drukhari player and just checking this out, yes, this is not in the original version of the index. However, it's been updated uh, from Games Workshop, so you can download the latest PDF and it's in there. And what it does is it introduces a playstyle for Drukhari that is much more melee focused than the previous one, where you can have some real quite hard hitting uh, melee units. So what do we got yes. here? So, Two Archons. Yep. We got double <clears throat> Archon, one with Spiteful Raider, one with Nightmare Shroud, and then a third one with no enhancement. But guess what? These guys are going to give you access to some reroll wounds, which is quite powerful when you can very easily get reroll hits. Yep, you have one pain token giving you reroll hits, wounds, plus one AP, and then you get Lance if you charge out of transport. It does take the rather lackluster stats of Incubi and make them pretty good. Make some killers. Then yes. we have a low Hesperax. She is the named witch, but uh, she hits very hard, especially against infantry units. Yeah, Lilith is bananas. She also fights first, mm -hmm. and yeah, she is insanity. Um, so some really good characters in there. Yep, probably the four best characters, frankly. Yeah, Triple Archon and Lilith. <laughs> you can make a case for including, like, Drazar if an Archon... You're taking three Archons, but if one of those Archons goes in, like, a court of the Archon, then you can take Drazar and put him in some Incubi, and he hits reasonably hard. Not, like, yeah, insanely hard. he's pretty hard. cheap now. But I tend to agree with where Quentin is at right now, which is also Triple Archon, Triple Incubi, put them together, there you go. Then we got two 10-man Cavalite Warrior squads, <coughs> one 10 Witch squad. Then we have 10 Incubi, 5 Incubi, 5 Incubi, almost certainly getting those Archons. And then 2x5 Mandrakes, fantastic mission tool. Five units of Scourges with some nebulous weapon on there. I assume Dark Lances, oh. but honestly, the Haywire Blasters are pretty S solid. Skari likes the Haywires, and I don't disagree with Skari. They, uh, they dropped nine damage on my Lord of Skulls yesterday in one activation. I was like, all right, they need to die. <laughs> that cannot be allowed <laughs> to happen. <laughs> then two Raiders uh, for our transports, along with six Venoms, which is a lot, but transports do interact with some of the best stratagems in this book uh, and rules. Yep. So, as far as notes, just Drukhari MSU style list for the Xenos Fix My List, keeping it fairly fairly simple. So, what's your first level impression of this list? I think we have the outlines of, of a good list here. Yes. We have four very good characters. We have a couple of the units they want to go inside. We've got some good supporting pieces like the Mandrakes and the Scourges, but effectively we're lacking some of the additional support that I think is essential in Drukhari. So, for instance, the Beastmaster Pact isn't here. Uh, now, it's not always run. I know Scar is a huge fan of it, but some other Jukari players don't I mean, run it. Scar likes it. I like it, but generally. It gives you forward momentum for your army uh, in terms of midfield control, which is nice. 
and it's just a bunch of nonsense wounds. You have things like the Kronos, which help you get back pain tokens, which is a big deal when you want to use them in shooting and melee. For 50 points, you on average get back like one to two pain tokens every turn. And for 50 points, pick two units a turn, give them four rerolls to hit, and also plus one AP is a bananas unit. <laughs> then Talos. The Talos are one of the more durable things that can stand on objectives. They do decent damage themselves. I quite like them. I like them too. You have things like, we have a lot of trash units in here. 10 witches, 20 cabalites. Um, racks are not bad because when they die, they do um, generate a pain token right off of that. And whenever they kill anything, too, they also generate a pain token. I don't know if they're going to be doing any killing, but <laughs> when they die, which they almost certainly will, <laughs> they can get you those pain tokens. And that's a big deal when you just need to contest an objective, objective for very cheaply and expect the unit to die in return. Boom, you just get a pain token off of it as well. Yeah, when I played Quinton yesterday, he actually did get a kill with them because he shot some Dark Lances, wounded something, and was like, all right. Shoot. Hex rifle. Hex rifle. Because they have like a weird amount of yeah. damage three guns and <laughs> liquefiers and random nonsense. Like they were giving him, they were keeping his um, pain token economy going where it would have sputtered out and died. And you need that economy. It's literally crucial. As soon as you run out, especially in the early to mid game, you're in trouble. Yeah, because the problem is that they, they kind of compound. So if you don't have them, it's a, uh, it's a negative reinforcing cycle right you don't have pain tokens which means you can't kill units which means you can't get pain tokens which means you're killing fewer units which means you're getting fewer pain tokens whereas if you the pain tokens are flowing you reroll hits everywhere or all the relevant places and then you kill more units which gets you more pain tokens and you spend more pain tokens gets you them back with the with the chronos Stonks, basically. Yeah. yeah the, <laughs> the, the line stock, goes up. The stock market works basically the same way that Jakari Sky Splinter. Hundred percent. The rich get richer, the poor are just screwed. It, just, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just think about stonks whenever you think about Jakari, and you'll basically have the gist. So when we're looking at this, my thought is we have too much transport. Yeah, probably too much transport. For, obviously, transports are amazing in this detachment, do, but do we need eight of them? Probably, probably not. not. Probably not. Now, did they say anything in their description of the list? Just that it was looking to be an MSU style, which by being Drakari, we're going to fall into anyway. Definitely. Did they say anything about terrain format? They did not. That okay. is literally the only thing. Because one thing I get nervous about with Raiders is the fact that they are actually pretty darn hard to hide. Yeah, Quentin was having a problem hiding them against the Lord of Skulls. It's like they're either so far back that you don't get the advantages of using the strats related to them or being able to get back inside of them, or they're just going to die too easily. Luckily, there is a strat um, that I think when you're in that position of not being able to really stage effectively, you can drive it forward, disembark the unit three. That's 17 inches of movement, charge, and then get back in the transport. So that can help, but yeah, it, it, they are big, they are spiky, and they are very fragile. Yeah, if you play on WTC boards where you have the three-story ruin fully blocked, no problem. You got raiders hiding in there all day, every day. But you start playing on those medium-sized ruins or smaller ones. You have it, to hide behind the, the footprint. You lose a lot of distance. You lose a lot of distance. Or you have to get the raider involved when you go in because you <laughs> drop them out. And then you can't get the raider to safety. Right? You can't, you can't hop back in the raider behind a wall and try and do the, the slick stuff that you want to do. Um, that being said, I think two raiders is probably okay. The question here is what are we putting in these raiders? The one raider I get, right? We have an Archon with 10 Incubi. Done. Yep. Easy. The second one becomes more difficult. The second one is why why is it here? I if it was if it had 10 more Incubi with another Archon, I'd get it. But it doesn't. It ha is it low from the 10 witches? It might be, but or it's I, trying to split up the special weapons in the Cavalite squads and put them all in one raider and use the pain token to have it all re-rolling. I mean, that's that kind of goes away from MSU, and also I think it's bad. It also, yeah, barely does any damage. <laughs> then it all dies in return. Trust me, I've played against it. <laughs> it doesn't have fire and fade, yeah. Because this detachment, the one thing that like is not there, are the two things that are not fun for this detachment compared to the base one. There's a million reasons why it's better. But the two reasons why it's worse is no fire and fade, no fall back and do anything. Um, so no fire and fade means this raider would go out, shoot, and then immediately blow up in response. Um, I think that I think that the raider. I'm also 
very happy with what Quentin's been doing, which is Lilith, five witches. Yeah, I think five is totally reasonable. Because the witches do basically none of the damage. It's all Lilith. It's all Lilith. It's Lilith ablative messes for, you up. Yeah, it's ablative wounds for her. Yep, and then if you split them with the Venom, you get Lilith, five witches in a Venom, and five witches like outflanking or running up the board or something doing secondaries. They're pretty useless. Uh, there's, there's really nothing you can do with the 45.5 witch units. They just suck. Yeah. Um, but they'll come on from the side of the board and score a secondary like anyone else, and they're only 45 points. It's not that bad. That being said, I think we are a raider over where we want to be, and quite possibly 20 cavalry warriors over where we want to be. They do sticky objectives. You pointed that out to me in the in the pre-show, but like... Even so, I don't, I don't love them. At the end of the day, like, which ones are they sticking? The middle, your opponent is probably going to... Like, good opponents will have stuff to go over there. Maybe on certain missions, being able to have your home and the other one. But honestly, there's so many armies in the game that want to come down into your backfield anyway nowadays. Like, you're, not, you're leaving something back there anyway. Yeah. And the thing that we would want to kind of leave in that area is ready scourges. So, probably not going to get a tremendous amount of value out of the sticky. Yeah. And um, I think that if we're trying to make room, which I think that we we are... We definitely want to make some room here. We, we definitely want to make some cuts. I I rate Rex quite a bit, partly because they come well. in five mans. Thank God for that. Uh, I miss those days. <laughs> a lot of my factions have been just boosted to minimum 10. I'm like, oh, the five-man days. Those were the days. Yeah, when you have 17 units, just like <sighs> cheap units so throw good. out. I rate Rex. Rex are only 10 Rex, so two units of five is only 10 more points than 10 Cavalry Warriors. It might even shoot harder. It's definitely more durable, and it gives you pain tokens when it kills I, or dies. That's what I want. Is I, I think we need more pain token generation here. Sweet. I am totally down to say, hey, these Cavalry Warriors, I'm going to just take them and make them two units of five racks. For now, we might go more. Yeah. So this is your cheap mission play. This is your cheap skirmish. This... They're just good. They also do the, the fight phase mortals. Um, when you charge in, you can roll a die for every... Or not when you charge in. When the vehicle is activated to fight, you can do a bunch of mortals. So you can run in, hit, do a bunch of mortals, and randomly kill some skirmish thing that you don't have any yeah, business killing. Damage by committee. Yep. Um, so here we have... Let's, let's count our transports. 10 incubi, raider. 5 incubi, 5 incubi, racks, racks, witches. That's five venoms. There we go. We're now cut down to size. So with that all being said, where are our points at? Yeah. We're, we're definitely throwing one Cronus in here for sure. Yes. So we're at 260. So we have some options. We could try to make deeper cuts and try to get in like Talos. My guess is that if we wanted to try to make a bunch of Talos work, we would be cutting scourges to fit them in. Because they're the part of the list that I think can change, yeah. theoretically. And it's only 150 points to swap those 15 scourges for six Talos. Which is totally doable. Yep. But if you own 15 scourges with the right weapons, I'm not here to tell you not to run them. I think you know my opinion on one of Jukari's big weaknesses is holding primary. One of the biggest issues with them is... There's nothing that really wants to stand on objectives. Now, you can try and threat overload with throwing like a bunch of transports and then dudes pop out. But frankly, most of the good armies have enough firepower to get through the transports pretty easily. And then Super a bunch quick. of like not durable bodies is also probably dying at a, a pace you, you can't really afford. And if you get one turn of primary, but then you're just tabled, okay, that didn't work. Yeah, and also you're not dying to like, like crisis suit, like a six-man crisis suit brick kills anything. But you're not dying to that. You're yeah. dying to like a six-man breacher unit that walked onto an objective after getting shot a little bit and now blew up a Venom. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's, it's a problem that the Venoms are made of absolute paper. Like, just complete paper. So Talos are one of the things that demands firepower, can take pressure off your transports, and also can potentially survive, and they do a decent amount of damage. Um, My personal stance is that I think 330 points of if decently inconsistent firepower that stands on your home objective and tries to get lines of sight and probably only gets lines of sight like two or three times per game is not amazing. It's not really where I would be at if I went for Jukari, personally. 
Um, I would probably go three units of Talos and just try to try to have a bunch of proactive units going forward. That being said, Scourges are not bad. Fire and Fade units with heavy weapons with pain tokens are pretty good. That being said, we've already talked about this. We're going to get a uh, Kronos in there while we're while we're new. We have around. to. We have to. We need just that. one. It's a four up. It's just super easy to hide. It's only fifty points. It can even hold your home objective while other things go forward. Like it's it. it just take it. It's good. It makes your economy go, and you, you do want that. <laughs> Especially if, like, what happened with Quentin was when he was put into a corner, he's like, all right, I need to blow all of these pain tokens in the shooting phase to try and bring down a big boy. But if I do that and I kill the big boy, I only get one pain token back. So I have to hit on the Kronos rolls. And he did, and he got enough pain tokens to then have a follow-up fight phase. He didn't have the Kronos. His turn would have fallen completely flat. Exactly. There is no option. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we are at 210 points, which is not quite Scourges for Talos and add Mandrakes. Five points less. Um, we can also leave Scourges intact. Uh, so you mentioned Scarry likes the Beast Pack. Yep. So I believe it's a character. Beast Master. The Beast Master. And that would only take us up to five characters, which is not too bad. No, it's not bad. We actually have exactly enough for two Beast Packs in this list. <laughs> exactly. So Beastmaster, you get a you get a character who leads the unit, and they have a bunch of weird profiles and just a, a bunch of wounds. Just a bunch of wounds yep. in the unit. They scout, and then they reroll hit rolls of one, and they reroll charges, which is cute. But mainly what you're here for is just cheap wounds. 105 points, and you get, I believe it is three of one, two of, yeah, Three Razor Wing Flocks, two Camaro, one Claude Fiend, one Beastmaster. It's just a lot of wounds for 105 points. And it is, scouts nine. So the, I think the main reason that Drew, um, Scari really likes them is Drukari need to be able to pin their opponent back or tie up some nonsense. And yes, they have fast transports, but they have to have a whole staging turn to try and start doing that. The Beast Pack allows you to effectively do it turn one if you really need to, or minimum, you're always doing it turn two. Yeah, because they just are right behind that middle ruin, and then they can go potentially make a long charge, tie up stuff, just slow down the pace of what your opponent's trying to do. And I think a lot of armies that have infill scout units are trying to threaten to do the same thing. And I think it's that unique tool that um, otherwise Drakari don't have. Their opponent gets to stage on them pretty effortlessly. There's some other units that we could consider. Uh, grotesques are not bad. Yep. They hit. They kind of just do a bit of everything on the cheap. They're not like super durable, but they are four wounds with good toughness with a five of feel no pain, which is not easy to chew through. Uh, they have a decent amount of attacks. Uh, they're not bad. They're they're kind of generalists and they're not insane, but they do they are a role player. They're not like a bad unit or anything. Um, then we've got Talos, which I personally think are quite good. Talos are toughness seven, seven wounds with a three up six up, which a three up save is something that this army does not have. Uh, it has Incubi, but their toughness three. Um, and then it also has a five of Filmo Pain on seven wound models. Just annoying for 80 points to try to kill. And it does help out your pain token economy because once it kills anything, it's empowered forever. So you don't have to ever spend uh, resources on it. You can take twin Haywire Blasters on them, which would be like four shots um, with twin link dev wounds and anti vehicle four plus damage three. So if you did shoot a vehicle to death, you would then become empowered for the rest of the game, get in, start clubbing people with uh, your stupid macro scalpels and Talos gauntlets and whatnot. So, you know, Talos gauntlets... I'm all about putting Talos in here. I, I like Talos quite a bit. I think their profile for 80 points is just, just good. You can take a Twin Heat Lance, which also hits like, like a bastard. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's shorter range. It's not as reliable. It's one shot, but it's the profile's a hell of a profile. It's 14, 4, D6 damage with Melta 3 and yeah. Twin Linked. It's, it's not nice. <laughs> it's not. It's a mean, mean man gun. Like, it very much You'd is. you probably still go for the Haywire so that you can yeah. kill vehicles relatively reliably. I would agree that the Twin Haywire Blaster is the best one, but it does also kind of take over for the Scourges because you can do that. I mean, what we could do is we could leave five Scourges in, add... Upgrade two of them to two units of Talos, and then add a beast pack in. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, so, just gives yourself options. Yeah, I I like being proactive and having units that go forward and do things over units that 
sit back and hope you're, that they can shoot enough things to death over yeah. five turns. You're Jakari. You're not tabling people. <laughs> no. Not tabling me. You're not tabling Jack. No. So, like, stop trying to lean into that. You having a 330-point castle in your backfield that survives all game, cool. As long as your opponent doesn't have him direct fire or uh, Inceptors. It, Inceptors will go right back there and kill them all anyway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but That's why we ranked him number one. Inceptors are Downers. the best data sheet in the game, so it doesn't matter. Exactly. I personally think Talos are just good for their cost. That's my personal opinion. Um, it's a different profile than you otherwise get. Yeah, and at 160, I mean, it's, it's cheap. Um, and then we have, that brings us to uh, the Beast Pack. So I'll grab Beastmaster. That only brings us up to five characters, which isn't the end of the world. Yes, that technically does give up max, but if you keep one safe, okay, they get 16 points out of it. They're probably getting around 16 on 16 plus whatever the other one is. You know, like 15 on homers, 16 on assassinate. That's not the end of the world. Yeah. And your opponent always has to be concerned of, like, what if I don't get all of them, right? Um, the last thing I would want is potentially more mandrakes, but I don't think we're at the point where we're cutting anything to get them. So that might just uh, might just be how it be. So just slotting the rest of these into my app and seeing where that leaves us. I believe that leaves us five points uh, under, 1995. So that lets us take a look at some of these enhancements. So we have the Nightmare Shroud, which is uh, the no overwatch if they disembark. I like that on the 10 man. Very good. Your opponent can't blow them up. And that's I would try. a big deal. I, I know you would. <laughs> uh, and then Spiteful Raider is probably the one you're taking at the, point, at the points cost you got left. We have 15 points left if we cut it. At that points cost, it's every time they kill an enemy unit in the fight phase, if they're on an objective marker, uh, you get an additional pain token. And we, we want those pain tokens. We want those pain tokens. For 10 points, I will take it. So I personally think this is good. What gun do you think the Scourges should have? Dark Lances? <sighs> Haywire Blasters? Um, Probably in this version, they because we have the Talos, they can have Dark Lances, and they can be our thing that's kind of near the home objective every turn. Yeah, something needs to screen out your home. Everything else goes forward. Five Scouts fire and fade on your home every turn. Yeah, this does get worse with the Chronos because, but the Chronos here moves forward rather than babysits your scourges. Exactly, it gets into the action. It can tie things up. Yep. Being like, if you want to take three units of scourges, I'm not here to tell you you're wrong. They do dumb stuff, which is shoot and then knock it shot back with real with real with real guns at good range. So I like that, but personally, I think that I don't want to cut anything else, and I do want Talos. Yeah, I mean, you would cut like a Venom down to Mandrakes. Probably like cut a unit of Rax and a Venom, cut the Beastmaster down to Mandrakes, get another unit of Talos. That's probably what I would yeah. go. It's, um, it's small changes, but I think this is a very good core. Yep. KR Quintero, the Witches unfortunately are minimum 10 on their squad size. So the way to get a five man is you put five of them in a Venom, and then the other five of them like outflank and or do secondaries or whatever. Um, but the Venom lets you split them in half. So you have five witches with Lelith in a Venom, running around, being a total jerk. The army is very finesse-based. 100% it, it yep. is. That's a Drakari. <laughs> very much is. The army is actually made of paper. It does hit pretty hard. It moves pretty quick. has a lot of tricks. But if you get caught in the open, you will get shredded. It's partly why I like the Talos and the Rax. Yeah. So, good, thing to, uh, good thing to work on. If there is a turn where you send out a lot of stuff... You know, there's a bunch of Incubi with Archons in their face. There's transports there, plus Talos on the objectives. Are they really getting through all of that? Probably not. Yeah. And my my take on... So people are asking about Talos. My take on Talos is that they're just kind of... My theory, my pet theory. I've not put them on the board, so take that with a grain of salt. You have played against them. Played against they were, them. They were the best thing in that <laughs> army. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, the thing about Talos is that I think they're just a good profile for 80 points, which is something that Drukhari does not really have. Um, everything else that they have is, like, offense slanted, good for their cost. Talos are offense, defense, and uh, shooting slanted, like, and are just a good point price point for 80 points. Seven Toughness 7-7 seven, seven wounds with a 5 of Field of Pain is just annoying to get through. They have a good armor save, which is kind of rare. They can actually bounce stuff off their armor save and cover, and then they have a five of film of pain, so it takes multiple shots to put them down. Uh, they're not that expensive. They pack guns that are real. They pack combat that's real. Yep. It's something that Drakari just don't have. She's a very good generalist unit. Mm -hmm. 
that can push objectives and just kind of be a jerk. If you just let them keep doing their thing, oh, like that happened in the game against Jack, they just keep doing it. <laughs> you have to really dedicate to just finish them off. You, you definitely have to kill Talos. Talos are very, uh, very durable. All right. So I, I think this is where I'm happy with it. I don't know about you. Yeah, uh, I'm happy with that. All right. Warhawk, so, let us know what you think. Absolutely. All right, so next up, we've got uh, a bit of an obscure army. People haven't been playing this recently. Probably not. Probably not. We've got Necrons. What would be Xenos with Richard on if we didn't do Necrons? But it is Awakened Dynasty. So Awakened Dynasty is the original one. Um, it's somewhat changed, it's like slightly changed. There's a couple of stratagems that are a bit different. But uh, this is the one that was founded on their index, which means it has better healing than any of the other detachments. And it can be various melee units punch up quite a bit harder with uh, plus one AP and plus one strength. Um, so this is one of the ones where the reanimator benefits this army a lot because you can use the strat after you, um, you know, take damage in shooting or combat to heal D3 plus one if you're led by a character. And then the reanimator adds another D3. So yeah. you get more times to heal in this detachment than any other. So it's a big deal. Yeah. So this is uh, Gavin Khan's list. Uh, this is very close to the list he played against me and Quentin at uh, the Grand Onslaught 7. He beat Quentin, lost to me in the finals. Um, it's pretty solid. This is with some changes that he made after that game. I believe he cut something and put in two heavy destroyers. I assume he had to cut a thing that existed in his list. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's some there's a lot of interesting decisions in Awakened Dynasty versus other versus Canoptic Court or Hypercrypt that I think are interesting to go into. Let me go over his notes and we can talk about what's in the list. Yep. So he says, looking to make Awakened Dynasty work, I feel light on backfield objective holding as everything wants to move in a ball. I'm looking to lean uh, lean this out, maybe more units and drop the spider tech. I feel like eight flat six damage guns is good, but maybe too much. So, yeah, so what has he got in here? He's got the Silent King, who is just a boss. He is significantly better in the new meta because his ignore mods aura it's ignores brutal. all mods, which is you know, armor contempt, half damage, minus damage, super good. He also is an aura of uh, plus one leadership. So all of a sudden, your leadership six Technomancer is leadership five in the Wraiths, which makes it a lot harder to battle shock that unit away. Yes. Then you have Nightbringer. He's the best Katan. And just a really it's not even close. Person. Yeah, I mean, he's the best. Then two Technomancers, one with the Veil of Darkness to teleport, two six-man Wraith units, and then three by three Tomb Blades. These are really good skirmisher units and have a little fire and fade. I think he ran them as one with the assault weapon, the other two with the blast gun. Because two the of them do more damage, one of them lets them advance and fire and fade. Yep. He's uh, kind of in love with move blocking with these things. Maybe a little bit too much, Gavin. Um, but, uh, but yeah, he trapped Quentin in his deployment zone, and that definitely was not good for, for the Eldar. And no, I mean, even if Eldar's in the middle of the table, it's a struggle. Yes. Then, uh, five flayed ones. These guys have infiltrate, so they let you get, uh, some good midfield presence early. The reanimator, like I said, synergizes awesome with the strat. Yeah, I like uh, it. This one. Uh, the spider, probably not needed here, I agree. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you need something to hold your home objective, right? And yep. then you have three units of two Locust Heavy Destroyers with the Gauss. I will tell you, this list slaughters Catan at speed because you have flat six damage weapons that ignore their half damage. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, Plus oh. you got a lot of nonsense. And then Wraith had a strength seven. Well, strength seven doesn't matter, but uh, ignoring mods. Ignoring half damage, yeah. You can you can really rip through them. And you're, you're plus one to hit all the time. Like, I actually really like the Awakened Dynasty tech that Gavin's been going for, which is kind of a, meta bre or a mirror breaker list. Yeah, because he's going for Awakened Dynasty, which has its its own things that help it out, and versus the Canoptic Court or whatever. But he has the Silent King, and the Silent King is really good in the Necron Mirror. Yeah, if your opponent has Katan, the Silent King is the edge over that. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And then eight flat six damage shots. Just Katan hate that. And you know who else hates that? We were talking about his matchup into Thousand Suns because that was a possibility. Um, Magnus would love to turn those flat six damage guns into damage zero, and it yeah. turns out they're going to stay at damage six, actually. <laughs> <laughs> if you can see Magnus, but yeah, if you see him, he's, he's getting he's, lit up. He's getting zapped. And I can tell you how Gavin runs this army, which is a ball, right? 
Silent King, Nightbringer together. Wraiths in front to block maybe a second unit or a second unit skirmishing. And then the heavy destroyers like following the ball, kind of, with a reanimator in the center. It's really annoying to interact with. It really is. So what, what are your thoughts, Mr. Mr. Seeks? So one of the things about Awakened Dynasty is you want enough reliable shooting to back up the combat elements that are buffed by it. And I think one of the things that's quite powerful here is uh, since you have Veil of Darkness to once per game teleport, a regular break of Locust Destroyers with the Locust Lord is actually a pretty solid add. You think he in Mythix? The, the, scatter, the scatter guns? No, that's the heavy locusts. Oh, you're thinking just regular Just locusts. regular locusts, although you could go that direction as well. Because uh, the, the one problem with the Adminix is it's only AP1, and you're not ignoring cover in this detachment. It's true. But you are ignoring the Armor of Contempt, uh, for whatever that means. Uh, but the locust destroyers are uh, lethals, so yep. every five or six with the Lord is a crit, and then they have easy access to re-rolling. Uh, and then on top of that, it's just good volume of fire with ignoring minus or half damage. So you can put a lot of damage out there. And then it's six dudes you have to get through. You'll have the res orb in the unit plus the reanimator and the strat. I have personally found out the hard way that if you get them in combat, the Locust Lord actually beats the crap out of you. <laughs> um, I, He's got our... I, I may have, in a practice game, lost combat against two units of destroyers with two Locust Lords in them with... 2015 Death Company, I think 15 Death Company, the Sanguinor, and six uh, Inceptors. Just got the crap beaten out of them by two Locust the Overlord's Lords. Overlord's Blade, baby. Because as soon as they're wounded, you're rolling hits and wounds, and you're like, yeah. oh, Flat shoot. <laughs> yeah, it's, it sucks. Um, so I, I like that unit. I think it's pretty good. Other things that are good in this detachment are Scorpec Destroyers are actually pretty darn good. Plus one strength, plus one AP, and then... The Silent King nearby. It's only 200 points for that unit, and it actually hits very hard. They now, do have to be led, which is a problem. They do have to be led. Because the Scorpec Lord is um, good challenged. It's challenged in the good he, department. He, he, he's not great. But running just six of them for 200 points is not bad. True. True. Um, uh, you, also you won't get the plus pretty, one to hit, but... They're also pretty tough. They also reroll hits on the charge, I believe it is. They reroll hits on the charge, so that's why the plus one to hit isn't that like amazing. It's yeah. fine on them. I mean, honestly, if you want to break the mirror, I think you just replace the rates wholesale with um, Scorpex because they're equally unkillable to other Necrons. Yeah, I mean, the, the rates aren't going to chew through a Scorpex unit. The Scorpex will chew through a Wraith unit. They definitely will. They definitely will. Um, so that's, that's an interesting thing you can try there. I do like the idea of the Destroyer unit with rerolls to hit against an objective um, and... Lethal fives, ignore mods from the Silent King, and you just point at a Catan. You just teleport, see a Catan, and go, gone. The thing is, the Catan or their their firepower back isn't going to do enough to you, and you have a Resor plus the Reanimator combo, uh, plus the Strat to try and get them back. Yeah, and you also shoot rates pretty decently. You shoot away your opponent's shooting pretty well because I think that's what you go after. Yeah, is you go after like their destroyers, their heavy destroyers, things like that, and you look to peel all that away. Pretty good at doing that, and with the teleport, you make good use of it instead of the wraiths, which don't hate having Veil of Darkness, but I can personally attest that Gavin has not used it. Yeah, it's much better on the Locust, for sure. Yeah. So, you want to try and wedge that unit in there? I think it's very good in this attachment. Like, when I've written Awakened Dynasties, I, uh, unless I, I always add that Locust brick. So, we're going to move Veil of Darkness down here. If you don't have the Silent King, then I don't like it as much. It's still solid in this detachment. But with the Silent King, it's very easy. Because then you can bring them, off a, bring them off in strategic reserves, like destroy something on a flank, and then use Veil to get back near the Silent King for later in the game. Yeah. I, I like Veil on a shooting unit because you'll use it most of the time. Just don't use it. Nope, that's not. Destroyers. There we go. Don't use it like super greedily. Use it to, you shoot, 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 and then at some point later in the game, you get an angle and shoot your opponent. Because you do get value by just having it up, because they have to worry about where you can go, and you don't have to necessarily go there. Uh, you agree the spider? Yeah, he's not needed. Get him out of here. Wink. He's gone. Unfortunately, he's just not that relevant here. If this was Canoptic Court, then sure, because you could loan up him. But you'd honestly probably take another reanimator instead. Yeah, I like the reanimator quite a bit. 
And then that means we're going to get a Locust Lord, who I think is really good. What else does he do? Uh, he gives you crit fives, which is yep. solid. And then if the if the target is wounded, he gets the rerolls. All right. So he also carries a res orb, which is very good. Yep. Res um, the strat plus the res orb at the end of the phase very strong for getting enough back. Yeah, they kill like half the unit. You go all right. Immediately get two d three plus one back, and then d three or d six, and then two d three. Yep. And you're just like, oh, I'm back to full. I, like, you can kill it down to one or two models, and it still goes back to full at least once again. Yep. Which is pretty good. So Locust Lord is 80, but with Veil, he's going to be 100. And for 280, that points, that is not a bad package. We do have to find room for it. So where, as the Necron boy, the Necron man himself, where would you try and find room here? Because we are, I mean, I will... I will crunch the numbers and find out how much we're over by, but it's probably going to be a significant I amount. I think you cut uh, two locusts as well. The heavy. I think you cut two of the heavies by accident, too. Because it's only four now instead of six. I did cut two, because I assumed we would need to cut some. Um, we can stay at six. I'm happy to we'll stay at six. We'll cut other stuff. All right, shooting. Richard is a big fan of, of Necron like shooting. Big guns. Big guns never tire. <laughs> big guns, they do not tire. They've been known to not tire. Okay, so if we leave that in... Um, we cut the spider, and we add in doo -doo -doo, we add in a squad of locust destroyers. We're going to be over by 185 points. Okie doke. So I would cut one unit of wraiths for sure. Okay, interesting. The thing is, is you're already in a ball, like you said. What you need to do is one wraith unit is going to eventually go out to a flank. And then the other, your ball is controlling the other objectives. So you create a triangle. So you got your home objective. You pick two objectives, probably the middle and one on the flank, and you control that area. And then the wraiths can always go to a different uh, place if you need to, or they'll stay central. So he's been he been had been using the wraiths as like the front line of the ball to prevent people from engaging on on the ball. Well, oh, we're gonna bring Scorpex instead. Sick. I am all about this. I think one unit of wraiths is very good just because it's an anvil from hell. Yeah, and it can be the first thing that's out. Yeah. All right, so what, what do we have left now? So, so if we cut that uh, and we go down to just the one unit of wraiths, we're going to have 95 points left, which is not any amount of score packs, unfortunately. No. Uh, as good as Tomb Blades are, I don't think you need that aggressive move blocking. I think you can go for cheaper stuff, personally. How do we feel about flayed ones? They're also a little pricey for you get, personally. Uh, you can make them punch up in this detachment, um, but are you using the strat on them over other stuff? Probably not. No, cut all that. <laughs> all, all of it? All of it. All of it. All of it. Bye bye All right, so <sighs> no Tomb Blades. So we're trying to get more stuff that does stuff in the list. Yes. I can't move Block Quentin in his deployment zone anymore, and we're all very sad to. about you, that. You don't need to. Okay, so we have 390 points left, which is a lot. Okay, 300 Not, what? 390, which is almost two squads of score packs, so I don't think we want to go there. I think no. Let's you're get thinking one, one squad and yep. then trash? Yep, let's get one unit of score packs. All right. Like I said, they, they punch significantly harder in this detachment. Do they get the, um, they get what, plus one strength and... AP. Plus one strength and AP, is that, they get both? They go to strength, yeah. They, uh, uh, so one of them is only, only if they're led by a character. Only if they're led by a character, so they'll get the plus one strength. They go up to strength eight. They have dev wounds. I honestly don't think they need, like, any buffs, really? They don't really need to, because they're reroll hits, and then they'll just put a, a ton on you, and they'll have two plasma sites. Yep, and you also have the Silent King. Like, Scorpex, like, rerolling ones to wound if you, uh, if you need that nearby as well. Okay, uh... One thing I really like is the Technomancer here. Yeah. Should get the enhancement. I forget what they changed it to, but there's a stealth enhancement. Oh, just to make it harder to kill? Yep. Since you're not lone opping them in this okay. detachment. Oh, geez, yeah. Um, well, it's locked content. Do you remember how many points it is? Uh, 20, I believe. 20 Nether 20. Realm Casket? No, that sounds right. Okay. <laughs> oh. All right. There we go. So... I'm going to call that, I'm going to double check that. Uh, I'll look at it. Thanks. Yeah, I think you have the codex on your phone. Yes, I do. Sweet. Okay. So we'll put that down there. Yeah, that just makes them a lot harder to shift in shooting. And 
in the Awakened Dynasty, you can make it a lot tougher because you can res in between. Nether uh, Realm Casket. Nether Realm Casket. Didn't know they played Minecraft. Nether Realm Casket. So that is 80 points uh, total for that dude. Yep. So we're going to have 370, 170, I believe. After all is said and done, yes, 170 points left. Okay, so now out of our cheap stuff, you got Solo Locust Destroyers at 30, you got Scarabs at 40, and then you have a variety of units that you saw, like the two blades, that are a bit more expensive. I personally think that regardless of what you run in your backfield, if your opponent gets back there, they're killing it anyway. Yes. So I like to keep it super cheap. So I like the two Solo Locust Destroyers. Just, yeah, just a... Uh... 60 points for two two dudes. Solo, right? So two. Yep. So they're 30 points each. Ooh. Yeah, because there, there's nothing you're going to be comfortable leaving back there that isn't going to melt immediately. We have 110 points. How do you feel about a second reanimator? That's where I was going. I, I got the vibe. Because <laughs> we have roughly about that many points left for that and like a scarab unit. So if we take two locust, solo locust destroyers, which I'm not sure. Some armies get to take one of things, and some armies have to take three to six. You can never tell who's going to be who. One of the things is awesome. It's pretty damn good. All right, Canoptic Reanimator. And if we did go a Scarab Swarm, we would be five points over. So unfortunately, we have 35 points left, and we are out of the ability to take... Cannot take any more solo locust destroyers. But if we have 35 points, we could upgrade a locust to something else. We could, we could. Um, unfortunately, the the Technomancer who was the auto choice before is no longer a lone op, so he doesn't fit in there, and we're off of getting a Hexborn destroyer, which is By different. five points, <laughs> which uh, ain't fun. Let's see. Here. You want to take a take a look, see. This list it, shoots hard. It really does. It really does shoot hard, and it has enough board control to be really annoying. And, um, and one unit of race is enough to screen from their first layer, and then you're like first layer dead, <laughs> and then Scorpex. And then you have Scorpex. I would honestly screen with the Silent King against a lot of people for the second layer, depending on what they have. Uh, the it, it takes a lot to take him down. Yeah. And then you hit them with the Scorpex plus all the other you stuff. You can also one CP res them in here pretty easily, especially uh, if you've read it. Crypto are 60. Why? Yeah, everything is just kind of too, a little bit too so expensive. We have, all right, if we cut one Locust, we have 65? 65. 65. Uh, we could go for Death Marks. Uh, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they could hold your home field. We right? could just cut the Nether Realm Casket. I don't really want to do that. It, it feels good in this detachment. It feels Stealth like, is super annoying. I think that's what the Wraiths are trying to do, is just be the beefiest boys possible. And I don't really want to try and make my trash a little bit better and sacrifice that, you know? All right, let's 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 just cut a Locust and add the Death Marks in. Let's do it. I, I don't really know if there's a better option. Are they exactly 65? Yeah, they're exactly 65. Okay. How do you feel about this? I feel good. Like I said, I... I've typically, so it really depends on what terrain you typically play on. If you play on heavy terrain, then I think you lean heavier into more score packs, and you have a lot of combat pressure. Yeah. If you play on lighter terrain or terrain with good angles, I think this style with a lot more shooting, because Doomsday Arcs are quite expensive for what you get at 200 points, and they're a shooting unit that does like this detachment. But uh, you can't. You don't really want to run the uh, the Canoptic Doomstalkers. They're much better in Canoptic Court. So you need some sort of shooting to... To put around this army you've got six locusts plus the lord plus six heavy destroyers plus the silent king plus the nightbringer that's, that's a that's, lot of guns that's a lot of guns vehicle armies lot. will get dropped your opponent's like i failed two saves and you're like 12 damage and they're like <laughs> yeah they have eight six damage shots that ignore mods so it's brutal into enemy katan it's nasty into wraiths because it's oftentimes fail a save die so like you put eight shots into them and you if you're not ignoring mods because you're not going to a Catan, you go real ones to hit and wound. 
and you just shoot and you're like, here's seven saves, please. Oh, look, I just killed half the unit. Or I'm going to shoot you with a locust. Oh, look, your race are all dead. The nice thing about the Simon King here is he has the 12 indirect fire shots, so he's very good at cleaning up the chaff stuff in the early game when he's central, and then uh, lets you use the other units to be killers. Yeah. I think this list is quite good in the mirror. You have double reanimator, and you have the strat to res in between activations, and you have a lot of shooting, and you have ignores mods. So, like, you chew through Catan really well. You chew through any, like, high toughness things really well. You have the shooting to chew through most units in their army, and you have the reanimators, you have the strats, you have the uh, res orb. So that means they're going to struggle to kill you, but you're not really going to struggle to kill them. Also, if you f if you go and swing on the Silent King or the Nightbringer and fail, specifically on the Silent King, when he loses a Meneer, you can use the strat. In so the, you'll, get, yeah. you'll get the D3 plus a second one for the reanimator. Then he'll heal in your command phase another D3 or 2D3. That's a pain. Then the Nightbringer, you have the Technomancer to heal him plus the reanimator will give him the extra D3 in your command phase. <laughs> I mean, you could consider, right, trying to finagle points by cutting, like, a heavy destroyer unit, some amount of stuff, trying to get a second unit of Scorpex in there. If you want to go that route, you probably can. Probably involves cutting a reanimator, to be honest with you. Probably, yeah. But, um, like, what you could do, you could cut two heavy destroyers, cut a reanimator, cut the death marks, add back in the locust destroyer, and six more Scorpex. You can do that, too. Yep. A lot of options. If your terrain is heavier and you're not going to get as many firing angles, then having those score picks in there, they hit very hard. They do. They do. Especially with dev wounds, which is really good. And then I cannot stress enough how much ignore mods is, is huge. Yeah, you're like, okay, dev wounds ignoring mods. Good 82 luck. can get armor of contempted and then bounce. But hey, guess what? Silent King, bro. <laughs> ignore mods and then dev wounds, and you're just like, all right, chop, 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 chop. So I, uh, and they're also really hard to chew through. Yeah. Like they're really hard to kill. So I like them. All right, before we move on to the next list, I want to thank Connor Lobb for joining the War Room Gold. Thank you so much, Glad Connor. to have you in. Uh, good to see you. All right, Gavin, I hope you like the list, and uh, let us know what you think. Yeah, definitely. Excited to see it in action. All right, last up, we've got Muzz Buzz's Orcs. Whoa. Orcs in the Wah Tribe. So what, is, what has he got in here? All right, he's got a Beast Boss, Mazrag, Scragbad, We've got another war boss, or a, or a first war boss with follow me lads. So one beast boss, one war boss, one Mazrog. Only three characters here. Then two units of Gretchen for those cheap objective holders. Ten beast naga boys, twenty boys, five storm boys, five storm boys, five storm boys. A gargantuan squiggeth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> six gra tanks, six kilicons, and then one truck. Yep. So interesting smattering of units here. Not your typical orc list. Not your typical orc list at all. So this, the title of the list is Degrot Revolution, but spelled orc. -y. Where's the red gabo? You got to run the red gabo. Of course. Muzzbuzz says idea is to be as subtle as a brick to the face. Can you deal with the squiggeth, Mazrog, and all these grot shenanigans? <laughs> so let's talk about what he's got in here, right? So he's got a lot of hard hitting units. The gargantuan squiggeth hits like a freight train. The thing legitimately hits harder than a Lord of Skulls. <laughs> uh, I think it's flat damage 12 in combat. Ooh. Let me pull up the list in my phone. Here we go. Yeah, so if you're not sure what a Gargantian Squiggeth does, it is... I I don't even know how much how it costs. How big is it? It's huge. Can it move through terrain? Technically. Uh, <laughs> I believe it steps over four-inch tall ruins. So okay, it, but it still has to land. It still has to land, and its tusks are gigantic. Um, but their tusks are gigantic, so they hit really hard. Six attacks on water, and that'll be seven. At 14, AP3, damage 12 with Lance. Yikes. So you're wounding everything in the game on twos, <laughs> pretty much, at damage 12. So you will turn, um, you'll turn a monolith inside out. Yeah. If, if this thing touches you, you're dead. It can't tank shock, which would have been a help, but it's damage 12. Like, if this thing touches uh, Catan, the Catan are taking a lot of now damage six. They're not oh. used to that. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> yeah. Catan are not ready to half damage and then have the damage characteristic be six. They don't like that. <laughs> you can also give it crit fives. Oh, yeah. So it'll hit on threes with crit fives with seven attacks okay. on, on Wah turn. You minus one to wound it, I assume? You can minus one to wound it. Glad you asked. It is also toughness 13 with 30 wounds and three of six. So 
wounds, ideal. <laughs> so if you're willing to pour one CP to minus one to wound at every turn, it is hard to kill. Like, just, it's just hard to kill. That many wounds, OC 12, toughness 13 with minus uh, one OC to wound. 12? OC 12? OC <laughs> 12. The, the thing's numbers are off the goddamn chain. Uh, and then the sweep is similarly brutal. It is 18 attacks at 923. You can give it crit fives. So, like, the thing is nasty if you're willing to drop the CP to support it, which I personally would be. Yeah, if you're running it, definitely. If I ran a gar- if I owned a Gargantian Swiggeth, I would run a Gargantian Swiggeth. If you were running a Grot Revolution, you would be using it. <laughs> I would strongly consider it, at the very least. Um, Abilities-wise, I believe it just steps over things. And it's firing deck 20, but it's orcs, so that's whatever. Uh, you step over things that are four inches or less in height and other non-Titanic models. Um, and then it doesn't suffer the penalty of its hit rolls for making ranged attacks against things that are engaged with it, which is a rule that exists <laughs> technically. If you ever feel useless, just remember that that rule exists. <laughs> what does it have, like shooters? It, it yeah. It basically, whatever the dudes inside are carrying. And then it has... A cannon or a super cannon, and don't be confused by the name. They don't, they're bad. <laughs> uh, the super cannon is even blast, so even though you don't take the penalty, you still can't fire it into combat with yourself. Um, the super cannon takes away your transport capacity down to 10, but it is 2d6 shots at 12, 2, 3. They hit on fives with blast. So, my question is if we're doing the Grot Revolution, what crucial Grot things do we not have here? So, he is one of each. One of each of the crucial grot things, which is grot tanks and killy cans. If you're looking to go for an unsubtle face smashy orc list, I don't think you take them, to be quite honest with you. I think you go for like knobs. I think the big 20 man boy squad is very good. I think you can even play it the way that uh, Sean Naden does, where he takes a 20 man boy with a war boss with follow me lad and a wa banner, and then he has uh, Gazgul, so that they get lethal and sustained when they're within 12 of Gazgul on the turn that they're wine, And then they get lethal sustained, and then for one CP you can make it lethal sustained fives, and they're 20 dudes with a billion attacks. That's um, enough. You'll, you'll, you'll do enough. You'll, you'll chew through a lot of stuff, and then... Um, and that's anti katan tech, right, for orcs? anti katan tech, and he also likes to give the law banner the enhancement to fall back and charge. So if you don't deal with it immediately, it'll fall back, hit you again. It'll fall back wa a second time because of the wa banner and hit you again. So it's a persistent threat you have to address. I like that unit. The unit's quite good. It likes to come out of a battle wagon, which has, I believe, 22 slots in it, but it, it needs to. Um, that is very expensive. It's like 500 points for that unit with the transport and the characters and everything. It does do the, do the Lord's work. That being said, if you want to murder Catan, and I do, you don't need to look that far. What you need to look for is Beast Snagger Boys. Beast Snagger Boys have a lot of attacks. Reroll hits against monsters and vehicles. And you do take Gazgul. You just take a 10-man Beast Snagger Boys unit, charge. They'll have lethal sustained fives and full rerolls to hit with a bunch of attacks, like five attacks apiece. Uh, at strength six, so you're even wounding on fives when you do go with your actual wound rolls itself, you'll drop a Catan off that. Just a 10-man squad of Beast Snagger Boys going in. Really? Just the 10-man? So let's let's crunch the numbers. So a 10-man, they'll have lethal sustained fives and full rerolls to hit. So it's going to be a bunch of guys with four attacks apiece. So the the sergeant will have five. It's power snap. It's slightly better in a way that doesn't matter. So it's going to be about 41 attacks. 41 attacks, re, full rerolls to hit, fishing for the fives with lethal sustained is going to be... Um, do, 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 do. Run in the numbers uh, 12, then you roll everything, you get 8, so times 20. So it's 22 auto wounds and then sustained. I think it's like 30 hits. It's gonna be like it's gonna be like 50 hits or something, and then those are gonna wound on fives. I might be fudging the numbers a little bit, but it's definitely 22 auto wounds slash sustained plus some amount. So I think it's gonna be about 50 hits, which means you're going to do about Wounding on fives is about 18 wounds. So it's going to be a grand total of 40 AP 1 damage 1 to you. Yeah. That will kill a Catan. So that is a pretty nasty unit. You do have to have uh, Gazgul backing it up. But I like Gazgul plus two guys if you're looking to be unsubtle. It's an option. So you're trying to shove Gaz in here? I am trying to shove Gaz in here. <laughs> um, I, 
Let's look at grot tanks and kilocans, and we can go in that direction as well. It's an option. I would be interested to get your take on those units. I don't know if you've ever seen them. I've never seen them. We don't well, own them, so we've never yeah. played them. Yeah. Uh, grot tanks, their ability is once per turn. When an enemy ends a move within nine inches, they get to move six, which is a very good rule. That's a good rule. It's a very good rule. They have, uh, it's not six grot tanks, sorry, it is eight. There are eight in the unit. Um, Beast Naga Boys, I believe only the Sergeant has like anti-vehicle monster 4 plus or something. I don't think they have it on all their weapons. Uh, they just reel hits against <laughs> monsters and vehicles, which is pretty good. Um, Grot Tanks ranged weapons, as I believe they each have uh, three, four models. Yeah, so they get a selection of weapons and one per four, because there's eight, one per four get a second one. So you can take some decent weapons. Rockets, I think, are were, last time I checked, were my pick. But Custom Mega Blast is also pretty good. Um, rockets are D3 Blast at 923. Or you could go Custom Mega Blast, which is 92 D6, but not Blast. I'd probably take Blast and Non-Hazardous. Uh, Grotzuka and Big Shooter are a bunch of bad profiles in the Scorch. The yeah. Grotzuka, though. <laughs> you got to take the Grotzuka, except you, you definitely don't. Um, you, you definitely don't. So you take rocket launches. So for every eight grot tanks, you'll have ten rocket launches, which is a lot of shots. It's ten D three plus ten times blast, and then you hit on fours. No messing with that. And then it's just nine two three. That's pretty good firepower. And they move if you get nearby. What's their defense? Um, well, their offense in combat is very bad. Uh, that doesn't exist. But their defense is toughness 6 with 5 wounds and a 3-up save, and they are OC2 apiece. They move 10. So as far as, like, a shooting unit goes, they're not bad. And they are 40 wounds at toughness 6 for a unit, which, again, not bad. Uh, I've seen people say that you get to ramshackle if any of them explode, because they're all deadly demise 1. Not how it works. It's when your unit is destroyed, just FYI for anyone playing this. Um, so the last grot tank could careen, but if uh, the first one. if the first one dies, the unit doesn't get to careen. It's when the vehicle unit dies. Anyway, so it's a decent amount of firepower. Ten rockets every turn. It's a good amount of wounds. It moves if you get close to it. It's a good unit. Tell me about these kilocans. Kilocans are uh, worse but cheaper. So they are six models. And they each also come with your choice of rocket launcher or other worse guns. Grotzukas? Yeah, not yes, you can actually get Grotzukas. <laughs> Would you like to have a rocket launcher? D3 plus three at six zero one. <laughs> um, the choice a cooler, is yours. It's a cooler name. You can call a rocket launcher a Grotzuka all you want, as long as you use the rocket launcher profile. <laughs> um, it's exactly the same, basically. Melee weapons actually has some. Three attacks at eight, two, three, hit on fours. And they'll have sustained because they're works um so that, that's not bad and you can sustain fives although they're probably the last thing to get sustained fives but heck if they're by themselves screw it um and then whenever they're selected to shoot uh you roll a die on a one the nearest other friendly orc unit than 12 inches takes d3 mortal wounds because they shot them <laughs> on a two plus they get ignores cover okay that's not bad not bad it's not bad uh they are 42-ish uh, points model. They're 250 for six. They're not bad. They move slow, if I remember correctly. Yeah, six inches. And they are also toughness six with five wounds. And a three-up save. So there's a lot of break-it-down points in these bad boys. Oh, yeah. No, that is just a thing that... <laughs> like, <laughs> that, is, that is just a thing you're giving up here. For my money, I think Grot Tanks are not just better than Killicans, but I think they're significantly better than Killicans. Um, you want another unit of eight in here? You definitely can. You, you, I don't know if Grot Tank a Palooza is where you really <laughs> want to be. But what if it's the revolution? I mean, so 24 Grot Tanks is not a horrible. It's really not. It's 30 rocket launcher shots a turn. It's 120 wounds. Just, it's a lot to chew through. It all moves if you get close to it. It's annoying. But that being said, it doesn't like proactively impose a game plan on your opponent. And they are very bad at pushing angles. 
What you'll notice in 40K with shooting units is if you take a shooting unit and you start to push it up the board, there becomes a point where you no longer want to keep pushing with it because if you push it any further, it gets jumped. <laughs> And and that means that by the time you reach the center objectives, the Grot Tank Swarm is actually very bad. Um, it's decent at pushing about 30% up the board, 40% up the board. But once you hit the center, you're going to get jumped. You don't do a single goddamn thing in combat. And you have to rely on 16 OC to carry you through. And a lot of armies can just outmuscle you on OC. Just boom, 20 OC. Just boom, 20. And you don't do anything in combat. You don't fall back and do anything. You just have to hope your reactive move keeps you out of combat and then lets you shoot on the following turn. And they're not fast enough that they can, like, oh, one unit got charged, the survivors fall back, the other two units jump and blow them up. You're not, like, fast enough to do that. You're also slow enough your opponent can gauge angles on you. And you will lose a model every single time an anti-tank shot goes through. Uh, Two-thirds of the time an anti-tank shot goes through. But... I, I think it is an interesting army if you're playing on Planet Bowling Ball because it just puts out a ridiculous amount of shots at 24, but it cannot carry a game by itself. I don't hate one unit, though. Yeah, okay. Uh, I do hate one unit of Kelly Cancer. <laughs> you hate it? They move six, dude. They move six. At least the God Tanks They have Killa in their name, though. They have Killa. They do, but that's a lie. <laughs> it's a dirty lie. Why would Games Workshop lie to us? I mean, I definitely like... Two units of Grot Tanks over a unit of Grot Tanks and a unit of Killer Cans. 100%. 60 extra points gets you four extra rocket launches, gets you two extra vehicles, gets you the ability to move when you get near them. It's just better. Like, if you wanted to take 16 Grot Tanks in this list, I'm actually here for it. But thirty, but 24 is, is just too much. If you want to go the Grot Revolution, I'm here for two units. That is the maximum I would take. Because um, you push with the Squigath, and you have two units of Grot tanks kind of pushing up board, but the rest of this is going to be MSU because what are we doing? <laughs> nope. Sorry on that. Sorry here. We're going to cut points. We need we need some points back. Do you still run Mazrag if you're going to always might just want to move the Squigath? Um, I still think so. Mazrag's just a good profile, and he is hard to kill even if you don't have minus one damage, minus one to wound. And there's uh, something to be said for either of them could minus one to wound. So if your opponent has one big unit, they're just like, I don't know where to put my shots. I don't know where to put my combat. Because Mazra can go in the minus one to wound in combat. So I, I think so. Mazra's just a good enough profile. I kind of want him. Okay. Um, so let's let's add in the second year Grot tanks before I change my mind. Uh, because we're looking to be unsubtle. This is Squigath, go, go burr. Grot tanks motor up behind him. Give that a shot. <laughs> but we need we need some cheap stuff to push up and actually like do things on the board. So I'm sorry, the ten man unit of boys with uh, the war boss are going to sleep, and we're gonna look to try to fill out the rest of this with cheaper stuff. Um, I don't know if you need three units of storm boys. They're cheap, but they also don't do anything. Whereas, like, 10 boys in a truck is cheap and does something. Um, but we'll see how many points we need. If we need to shave a Storm Boy unit, we totally can. I am going to go with my favorite skirmishing unit, which is I'm going to try and wedge in three units of boys in three trucks. You've played against them. They're just... They're just good and cheap. They're just good, and they're just cheap. Uh, the truck's actually 65. The list is legal. It just was working off an old graphic. Um, this also threat overloads the vehicle profiles because we have Mazrog, we have the Squigath, we have the Grot tanks. Your opponent's anti-tank is going to be very busy. So we're going to try this. Uh, I know that the boys are going in the Squigath, and that's the game plan here. I don't respect that game plan. I want the Gargantuan Squigath to be empty because 440 is enough for it, in my opinion. I don't want to make it more expensive because that's not really the direction you I want to put to like go. seven hundred points in one area. <laughs> no, I really don't. Also, the beast boss is expensive as hell. A hundred points for a character is not is not my going rate. Because you have to when you when you take when you eat your dessert first, 
which is where you take a squiggeth and a bunch of vehicles. When you when you spend for that, you, <laughs> it's time for austerity. <laughs> it's time to start shaving anything that looks at you funny and seeing how many points you can get out of it. And the answer is, this is 1980, right here. The real answer is cut this garbage. <laughs> and they're not garbage, they're fine. Cut this nonsense, though. They are nonsensical. Um, I don't hate the, the interplay between Gargantian Squiggeth and Grot Tanks. I think it's fine. Um, I like the boys in trucks. We could consider cutting some amount of Storm Boys and Gretchen. Uh, I want at least one unit of Gretchen, but we don't necessarily need two. Um, yeah, Beast Boss on the charge does hit hard, but we have hitting hard under control. Yeah. Um, we need to be able to play the game, which I think we can do now. We're 20 points under, so we can try to get a second unit that is tough and goes forward and proactively does things. Um, and for 20 points, I think that just is one of these become Beast Snagger Boys. Back to where we were, maybe. Yeah, basically. Um, 105. So I did cut the 20 man boys down to uh, two 10 mans. Yeah. But you can actually play the game now, which lets the Gargantuan Squigath not have to do stupid things like standing on objectives and deploying homers. Um, I just. I was um, playing. Why is it. I hate that thing. <laughs> the stupid font. All right. Um, I was playing with the murder train with the uh, the Lord of Skulls. Yeah. And on turn five, I drew a card, and the only thing that could do homers was the Lord of Skulls. And I, <laughs> I flat out refused to do it. <laughs> I was just like, no, I will not debase the Lord of Skulls to do this. Same thing, you shouldn't debase the Gargantuan Squiggeth by making it do homers. Other stuff in your list can do homers. No, it needs to be killing. Yes. Um, I mean... <laughs> The comment, becoming a pretty standard orc list just with a Gargantian Squiggeth and Grot Tanks. Yeah, just with a Gargantian Squiggeth and Grot Tanks. I mean, that's a lot of points. It's a lot of points. Um, I, I mean, I think this list is good. I think this list is actively good. I think more Grot Tanks would be bad. I think you can cut the Grot Tanks and the Squiggeth, then you are in a pretty standard orc list. But there's a reason why things are standard. It's because they're good and they work. And if you're going out of your way to take a bunch of ridiculous nonsense which will do work for you, but it is ridiculous nonsense. You need to have some backbone of like stuff that plays the mission and skirmishes and does the stuff you want to do. Yep. You can't have your key units being the point scoring too. <laughs> no. So I, I think this list is good. I'd really like to have some flash kits in here, but I don't see a way to cut that unless we go, unless we cut the grot tanks and start doing things in that, in that yep. area. Then you want to cut for more trucks and more boys. And then, and then all of a sudden you're playing my MSU work list that I, that I would actually play. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, man, if I had Gargantuan Squiggeth, I would run it. If you own the model, you're legally required to run it. <laughs> um, so how do I feel about uh, Mandos, Commandos? Every faction loves infiltrators. It helps uh, mitigate going second. So what's the issue with high being slightly expensive? They are a 10-man orc boy unit, basically, with some funky rules that costs, I believe, 130. It's been a hot second since I checked. Um, commandos are 135. So wedging in a, a, a five-man unit, very easy. Wedging in a 10-man unit, very hard. Yeah, very hard. <laughs> um, that's, that's basically where my opinion lands there. Yeah, if they were like 65 points, 70 points, you'd think about throwing some in. If they were 65 for 5, these Storm Boys would not be in the list. They would be Commandos. But 135 for 10 is just a big commitment in midfield. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're just all the dudes all in one place means that they're not cheap when they die. And they do die fairly quick. They used to have a lot of stacking rules that were very good previously, too. Yes. I don't remember what their abilities are because uh, they have stealth. They can't fire. People can't fire Overwatch at them, which they won't do. They'll just kill you normally. Yeah, they used to punch up, and they used to have uh, extra defense too. Yeah, which they have stealth, but that's not gonna stop them from dying. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm just not that impressed with the unit for 135 for 10. If it was, if it was 65 for five, I would run them. If they were 70 for five, I would strongly consider running them. But as is, honestly, this would probably still be a boy unit, and I would just have three units of commandos. 
Yeah, but it is what it is. All right, I think that's I think that's the list. All right, well, hopefully people enjoyed this. Uh, like I said, please leave a comment below letting us know what you think of these different lists. Which one was your favorite? Uh, what choices would you have made? We love hearing that and reading your comments. In addition, please give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and tell your friends about us. All of that massively helps. And Jack, if they want to submit their list in the future, how can they do it? So you want to go into our Discord, which you get access to by being a War Room member, uh, which you can do in the link below, and for a three-day free trial. Um, if you go into our Discord, which you get access to when you are a member, you go into the Fix My List Submissions channel and you post your list up. It doesn't hurt to tag me. does not hurt to throw a few compliments my way, you know? Or I, say I funny be, things. Or say funny things. Or title your list a funny name. Or include weird units. Anything gets your gets yourself noticed by the eye of Jack Ron. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, that that's what you do. You go pop them in there. And uh, if you... There's going to be a theme every week. I believe next week is Imperium, non-Space Marine Imperium. So if you consi if you consistently submit your list, the odds it gets picked pretty high over pretty time. Good. So if you want to go ahead and do that, we always appreciate it. We get a pretty busy uh, submissions, uh, pretty busy submissions channel. A lot to choose from, a lot of good lists to choose from. And if your list is too good to fix, uh, then I will give you the coveted gold star reaction. <laughs> Um, which has happened probably once a month on average. That's not often. Not often. I don't always see every list, but uh, yeah, it does not uh, does not happen often. Uh, yeah, so give that a give that a shout. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Hope you enjoy this one, and we'll see you next Thursday for another Fix My List special. Bye bye. So long for now.